and the precious faces of little children, unaware they're on the verge of going blind, might even die. But this capsule holds an instant cure. Hugh tells of the need for and the promise of a gift of sight, a gift of life. What vitamin pills do you take? Vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A? We're all so vitamin conscious, and yet we might not realize what the lack, the total lack of one vitamin could mean. It could be so destructive, especially for the kind of children you're about to meet. To investigate, Hugh traveled halfway around the world. And it was worth it, Barbara, to find an answer to a problem, which is this. Each year, worldwide, 10 million children will suffer blindness, either temporary or permanent, caused by vitamin A deficiency. A half million will go blind, and over 300,000 will die. But some very caring people have been working to overcome this problem, and for me, seeing them at work made this a really memorable trip. Meet Cesar, a four-and-a-half-year-old who lives in a remote corner of the Philippines. He looks healthy and hearty, right? Wrong. He is neither. Dr. Eva Santos, an ophthalmologist with Helen Keller International, places toy cars around the room of Cesar's dark hut, the first toys he's ever had. Cesar's baby brother makes a beeline for one. But despite Dr. Santos' urgings, Cesar does not. He cannot. He's afraid to move. Now you see, apparently this child cannot move because he cannot see in the dark. Cesar is night blind. An examination reveals dry eye and foamy bacterial bubbles on the white of the eyes, called Beto's spots. Cesar is a classical case of vitamin A deficiency. The liquid in this yellow teardrop is given to Cesar, a mega dose of vitamin A that costs less than two cents. Three days later, we went back to the hut to repeat the exercise. This time, Cesar didn't miss a beat. Without the vitamin A, we are told, Cesar would have gone totally blind within six months to a year. Cesar, do you want to come out and join us? Now, instead of going blind in six months, <laughs> he is protected from blindness for six months. I'm going to come and get you. Meet Florencio, age six, and like Cesar, malnourished. We found Florencio huddled quietly by his doorstep while the other children in the village were running around playing. Twilight descended, and as it did, Jeff Watson, director of Helen Keller International for the Philippines, tested Florencio's night vision by trying to play catch with him without much success. Florencio could not see the ball. Florencio has been night blind for three years. An eye examination reveals the same dryness and those same foamy spots as Cesar's. And like Cesar, Florenzio is given vitamin A. A few days later, it was, as they say, a whole new ball game. What you have just seen is one of the continuing health scandals of our time. Why? Because nutritional blindness is not only reversible if caught in time, more important, it is preventable. Mm, good boy. Good boy. Very good boy. Ow! Oh. <laughs> you almost expect nutritional blindness in these tightly packed, well-publicized slums, so close to Manila's Malacanang Palace, where food is scarce and unaffordable. But you don't expect it where we found it at its worst, much further away. Two-thirds of the Filipino people live in the countryside in areas like this. And of these, it's estimated here that 70% live below the Filipino poverty line, which is $1,000 per year per family. And one of the most neglected, isolated areas of all is the southern region of Bicol, an area known for its richness of landscape, its majestic volcano, and its shimmering rice paddies. But it's known for something else as well. This area of the Philippines has a blindness rate of well over 3% of its population, much higher than the Philippine national average of just over 2%, already one of the world's highest blindness rates. What does this mean in terms of people? Well, it means that in this area alone, around 50,000 people have gone blind, the vast majority children, 
and the vast majority for nutritional reasons alone. This is their fishnets right down along the base of these. But as we traveled through Bicol with Jeff Watson, former Peace Corps health worker and longtime resident of the Philippines, we saw at once of vitamin A and fish. that the problem of nutritional blindness had little to do with the availability of vitamin A rich foods. Mother Nature is not the enemy here. The fishermen, when they catch the fish, take them right into the market. They don't eat them themselves. They go in, sell them, and then they buy the rice. They figure rice is the is the food of the, the people. You know, that's as and long they, as it fills up your stomach. That's they can get more bulk for right. the amount of buck that they right. get. It's bulk, but it's bulk without nutritional value. Unlike vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables. A lot of times they tend to raise green leafy vegetables for the pigs, for, for animal feed. And the animals get vitamin A and they don't have go great blind. Eyes. Yeah, <laughs> and we saw that unlike the wastelands of Chad or Ethiopia, where nutritional blindness in feeding camps was recently recorded at an unprecedented 10%, the Bicol region is lush and green, a garden paradise with an abundance of vitamin A rich fruits and leafy green vegetables there for the taking. Here we have a perfect example of some of the vitamin A rich foods that you can find in this village. This is the gobi leaf that uh, it's very high in vitamin A. It's right here in the center of this village and you, in fact you can find it all over the village. It's, it's right over right over there. And you see it everywhere. Right behind us we have a papaya tree. Oh yeah. Uh, that somebody just probably dropped a seed there and it's, it's growing right up, the very fertile land, and you know they can grow everything right here. And that's the frustration for the Helen Keller team. One look at Cesar's seaside hut in Lamba Village, and you wonder why that emergency yellow teardrop capsule was needed in the first place. What did this child eat today? Uh, the anything? mother was saying that he had some sweet potato and rice even oh. though they do have some vegetables sitting right back here, green leafy vegetables. Now, why don't they feed to the, to the children what they eat well, themselves? There's some superstitions around here about eating green leafy vegetables that possibly it could cause diarrhea. And then also there are some superstitions about the, the uh, child eating fish. They, they, for some reason, they believe that, uh, that it causes worms, you know, the scarce worms. Do these villagers understand why their children are going blind? Well, they're very religious people. They tend to think that maybe God is punishing them. They think that they're cursed. They don't associate it with nutrition. In Lamba alone, one child recently died blind. Seven are night blind. And two children are totally blind now, including six-year-old Rommel. Does he talk? He's just shy now. Yeah, he's shy, but he can talk. In Rommel's case, as in so many cases, measles triggered the blindness. It's fevers and diarrhea quickly depleting his body's already weak stores of vitamin A. Knowledge about nutritional blindness is nothing new. It's been known for a long time. Why haven't governments given some priority to this problem? In the past, it's been thought of it's not a life and death type uh, problem. It's, it's more of a, you know, kind of a sideline. A sideline, that is, until recently, when the stakes changed dramatically. The setting was neighboring Indonesia. The time was the late 70s. The medical team studying nutritional blindness was headed by Dr. Alfred Sommer from Johns Hopkins University. And in the course of the study, something unexpected happened. The researchers found that many of the vitamin A deficient children were dropping out of the analysis. They were dying. And they were dying from the major third world childhood killers, pneumonia and diarrhea. While we had always known that children with severe vitamin A deficiency who were going blind died at very high rates, we never suspected that children with mild vitamin A deficiency died at high rates. And we found indeed that in our analysis, children who had night blindness, mild dry eye, mild vitamin A deficiency, were dying at anywhere from 4 to 16 times the rate of the children living next door without evidence of uh, eye disease. So it wasn't just a question of malnutrition generally, it had it to do with vitamin A. Even when we adjusted for malnutrition, it turned out that the children who were malnourished generally, but had normal eyes, had a better chance of surviving than children who were well-nourished generally, but had vitamin A deficiency. 
The issue of blindness suddenly became an issue of life and death. So the team followed up with a broader study in which half the children were given vitamin A every six months and half were not. The result, the death rate among the children who received the vitamin A supplement was a dramatic 35% lower than among untreated children. If now we find that something as simple and inexpensive as a two cent capsule of vitamin A or a fortifying vitamin A into some food that they regularly eat or simply convincing mothers to feed their children more green leafy vegetables is going to reduce the mortality rate by 50%, reduce the respiratory disease rate, reduce the diarrhea rate, uh, this is probably one of the most cost-effective things that a government can do. How does the medical team feel vitamin A works? Well, while blindness is the first visible sign of vitamin A deficiency, it is one of its last symptoms. By the time a child like this boy develops dry eye and night blindness, chances are the linings of his lungs and digestive tract have dried out also, making his young body more vulnerable to disease. In the coming months, armed with this startling new medical information, this joint team from the Philippine Ministry of Health, Johns Hopkins University, and Helen Keller International, with funding from our U.S. Agency for International Development, will fan out through the Bicol region to test vitamin A supplementation on 40,000 Filipino children. We done this little girl over here? If vitamin A prevents death as well as blindness in villages like Kobo, where the team came across a cluster of cases, vitamin A may well prove to be one of the most valuable medical tools a developing country can have to prevent the unnecessary deaths of its youngest children. She's in relatively advanced vitamin A deficiency and could very well undergo ulceration and destruction of her cornea within a matter of days if she didn't get vitamin A. The child just last week had some diarrhea, respiratory disease, uh, with cough and fever. And of course, that's exactly the pattern we're beginning to see. And so we end up with something like this, in which the child is probably only a couple days away from developing serious corneal damage and potentially blindness, as well as more severe diarrhea and respiratory disease, and ultimately death. So she's, uh, she's a lucky girl that she came today, and we'll give her vitamin A, and she ought to do quite well. Here we go. That little tablet's going to make a big difference in this child's life. A stroll up and down the main street of Kobo Village we'll revealed the extent of the challenge. Without looking very hard, we found nine families who reported their children night blind. As we went from house to house, we suddenly realized that during our entire trip through Bicol, we hadn't seen any blind adults. Now the reason was clear. They had all died as children. Something else was made clear, too. In Kobo, as in so many villages, a health worker was in place. But she had been taught nothing about those crucial connections between the way the children eat and the way the children see. Uh, she's a brave girl. Would you tell us she's a real brave girl? She's like when we go into a movie theater. Yeah. At first we can't see and then our eyes adjust and we're able to find our seat. These children's eyes don't adjust. They just stay permanently blind under those conditions. The older children tend to uh, eat everywhere. They eat at grandma's and uncle's and cousin's and their friend's house. But that little young child only eats what's given to him. Do we have a child here? What about his brothers and sisters? Can they see their food and their toys okay? They can't either. Well, that's not very uncommon because usually when a family has a diet that doesn't contain a lot of vitamin A, then all the children are going to be following roughly the same diet. And we found this repeatedly. Oh, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. I promise. Oh, what beautiful eyes you have. Yeah. Uh, he has a little problem, and we'll give him some vitamin A, and we're going to help him a lot with this two cent capsule. Do I do this? Sure. Go ahead. There we go. Oh, you got him. Oh, sure. Oh, no, it's not going to hurt. No, 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 no. Just get you, just put it right in. There we go. That's delicious. Isn't that delicious? Isn't that good? <laughs> I'm not as good at this as you are. No, you're better. And we just, you just reduced this child's risk of dying 20-fold. 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 He doesn't understand that. 
Uh, Hewick, is this at all a problem in this country? In this country, it's hard to escape vitamin A. Unless you're no. badly undernourished, mm. you, you can, uh, you'll have enough vitamin A. You know, we all grow up hearing, oh, oh, carrots are good for your sight. You know, eat carrots because we know yeah. there's vitamin A in it. And now also, there are those who take vitamin A because they think that it may be pre preventative for cancer. Can you take too much? There's, yes, you can take too much. There's nothing wrong with eating carrots, but yeah. mega doses really are dangerous. You shouldn't, you can get poisoned by vitamin A if you have too much, even though you need some of it. There's no conclusive evidence that it's a cancer deterrent. Mm. There is conclusive evidence that it can poison you if you get, get too much, so don't overdose yourself on it. I didn't want to leave while you I was there, it. though, you know? I, I, I just felt like I wanted to go on giving vitamin A to these kids that need it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Downs. <laughs> I felt like I that, can yeah. see it. It's, a, it's very heartwarming to see that you can do something like that. Well, later in the hour, another report. Would you pay a million dollars for something without really testing?